Use the mic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You use Thank the mic. you. I'll use the mic. Then. Um, so welcome. Um, my name is Mitchell, um, and you're here for extended work, extending WordPress with webhooks. I hope that's what you're here for. Uh, you're here for now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just get started. Um, here's sort of roughly a rundown of what I'm, what I'll cover today. Um, and there is a fair deal of content. I think. I'll get through everything in, within an hour, but uh, feel free to ask questions, but um, please don't be offended if I say we'll, we'll cover that later or come ask me afterwards. So, and then we'll stick around afterwards with questions or whatever. So, um, so that's that. Um, just a couple things, just so you don't need to scramble to write things down. I already put up a link to the slides. I put it up on SlideShare, and I put the link up on the Meetup page. Also, um, there's a link on the Meetup page for Speaker Rate, uh, which is a service where you can go and rate different speak different talks. Um, and I registered this talk there. I would love to get your critical feedback on how I did um, and phrase it. Um, so that's that. So let's get started. Um, just a little bit about me, um, so you know who I am. I look like that. Um, I'm a show, um, and I. Say I'm a linguist, coder, and teacher. Um, right now I'm at MIT. I'm a PhD student in linguistics. Um, right before that, until the summer, I was at Mozilla, uh, at Mozilla Labs, working on Ubiquity. Um, if you're familiar with that, if you're interested in that, we can talk about that later. Um, yes, very briefly, what is Ubiquity? Very briefly, it is a natural language command line for the browser that is multilingual. And that's the part I worked on. So that's the linguist encoder part. Um, I've been programming PHP MySQL since sometime like 2002. Um, I've only recently been using WordPress, actually, uh, relatively recently, since 2007 on my site. Um, and since then, I've been writing some free plugins. I've done some contract work. Um, and I'm, that's my website. I'm also on Twitter. So um, that's that. Um, a little bit about my WordPress claim to fame um, is that I've written a plugin called Yet Another Related Post Plugin, um, you, which you can call Yark, uh, like a pirate. Um, it's been mentioned on Laughing Squid. Also, Matt Mullenweg, founder of WordPress, uh, mentioned it as one of his favorite plugins on Techzilla. So, um, people like it. Um, over 250,000 downloads. But it's free, unfortunately. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, so you can go find that, uh, use it on your blog. Um, it's a quite powerful and popular, really most fun. All right, um, so that's me. Um, we can talk about me more afterwards if you care. Um, we're gonna get started. Um, so. As you know, uh, WordPress is uh, this open source package. Uh, you get it at WordPress.org. Um, it's built in PHP, MySQL, um, sort of as its base. Um, crucially today, I'm not going to be talking about WordPress.com, uh, which some of you may use. It's a wonderful service made by the same folks. Underlyingly, it's very similar. But uh, crucially, it lacks uh, a lot of the plugin features um, that WordPress.org with. So I'm only going to be talking about the self-hosted version today. Um, so it's self-hosted, right? So you download this thing, you put it on your server, you run it on your server, your database. So in theory, you could totally mess it up. I mean, you can modify it directly. Um, some people do that. Um, I would not recommend it um, for a number of reasons. One reason is that there is a very good alternative. There is a very good extensible plugin architecture built into WordPress, um, which we'll talk about today. Um, and also the fact that, for example, if you don't modularize your additions, your changes to WordPress itself, then later you can't upgrade to the next version of WordPress, you, know, you can't guarantee certain things, etc. Um, and in fact, because of this, uh, WordPress itself, I'll point out, um, uses this plugin architecture, these hooks, which we'll talk about, uh, to, mod to modify its own behavior. So even within the WordPress core, they use these methods. Um, and so plugins, there are lots of free plugins out there, mine are in there too. So most of you probably are familiar with the plugins directory. Hopefully some of you have tried some out. 
um, and you're familiar with that. But there are many plugins out there that are not on here as well. Uh, many custom plugins, people who didn't want to post it here, etc. But a lot are here. All right, so how does WordPress modify its behavior? So let's look at sort of WordPress itself. How does WordPress work? And I'm going to just work off of one example. So displaying the post's content. What happens underlyingly when you display a post's content? So it's going to parse the URL. Um, it's going to get the content from the database and then display it. Um, on the most rudimentary level, that's what's happening, but that is not that simple, actually. There, there's a little bit more going on. Um, and so, for example, um, I'll just focus on one of the, I'll just focus on the second arrow there. Um, but in that stage, that's where you get things like smart quotes, uh, paragraph splitting, um, the formatting of HTML, entities, smileys, all that sort of thing that WordPress does automatically. That's not done, and then the content underlying the database, that's not changed. That's done when it's displayed, and it happens during that era. So let's see exactly what happens in there. So um, you know, you parse the URL. WordPress says you're you know you're going to display a certain post. It gets that content, etc. Now it's at this stage, and WordPress says I have some content that I'm going to display. Does anybody want to modify it before I display it? That's what WordPress says. And we get some funny characters. So, so, so these are some characters that show up and say, hey, I want to edit the content before you display. So um, basically, WordPress goes in, a, goes in an order. I'm not going to talk about the ordering right now. But, um, and WordPress will take that content. And instead of displaying it directly, it'll give it to Texturize, which takes care of some of the HTML stuff, entities. It gives it to convert smileys. These are all PHP function names in the core. Um, and then it'll take that output, give it to the auto paragraph thing that adds the p tags, whatever else that's in there, um, and then it finally displays it. So that's how WordPress modifies its own behavior using hooks like this. Um, and of course, this is where you'll want to add your own functions, um, write functions, and then register them so that they actually are executed there. Um, now, just to formalize this a little bit. That pattern, where we have a series of different functions, and each one has an output, and then it is passed into the next one um, in a chain like that. So that pattern is a filter. Um, so even if it's a single one, it would be a filter. But basically, there is some content or some object or something that is being continuously edited. And each of those functions registered against that hook, which I went to. Um, modifies that, and then returns it, and then he takes it, modifies it, etc. So it just goes in a chain like that. That's a filter. Um, this kind of thing, so you know, here we're getting the content from the database, then we're displaying it. Um, that's one specific pathway. There are lots of different things that occur in WordPress um, while you're editing, while you're administrating, while it's displaying content. Um, and so those different kinds of sort of pathways, if you will, of where things can get modified, um, those are called hooks. In this case, it's a filter hook. Um, so I, I like to think of it as a pathway or a process. Um, and this one is called the content, right? Um, try to make that a different monospace font. So the content is the name of the filter hook that is used um, to hook into this process between the database and the display. So, any questions? We good? All right. Um, so, for WordPress to know what functions um, it's going to run at that filter hook, um, you have to register it ahead of time. And so, in PHP, when you write a uh, plugin, which we'll do in a moment, um, you're going to use kind of syntax like this. So, there's this function add filter, which takes a hook name and a function name. Pretty straightforward. Um, so that's how that works. Um, there's also another kind of hook uh, called actions. Um, and they're underlyingly basically exactly the same, but there's a crucial distinction. Um, so actions sort of correspond to certain events which occur in the lifetime of a blog. So um, some examples are you know, when a post is published, a comment is made, someone accesses the administrative interface, things like that. Certain things that events that are triggered don't necessarily have you know, some content that needs to be modified or something. But then at that action, then you can take advantage of that and do something 
when that happens. So we'll see an example of both of these. Uh, so actions uh, don't necessarily modify anything, but can trigger other processes. Um, and they don't have, the action functions don't have an output necessarily. So, um, but they can produce output. I'm, I apologize. They can produce output by printing directly into uh, the uh, output of the blog, modify the database, things like that. So they can actually, you can write with it as well, um, which we'll see an example of. So um, just to summarize, um, very simple distinction. The filters modify something and return it. That's what the filter functions do. And the return value matters because that's going to be the input for, you know, if there are other filter functions for that book. Um, actions, on the other hand, correspond to some event. They do something. It doesn't matter if they return anything or not. The return value, if it returns something, will be ignored. Um, so that's how you write an action function. And we'll see examples of both of these in a moment. So um, that's a quick run through of filters and actions. Do you guys have any questions at this point? Give me an example of events. So an example of an event. Um, so I had a few, like uh, when, a, when a post is published, or when a comment is made, or a new user registers, things like that. So that's the case where um, you know where it'll look and say there's a there's a hook we'll use later uh, for an action called uh, publish post, and so then it'll look for all actions registered against publish post, and then you know you can do those functions will run whenever some post is published. So you can notify Twitter, you can you know. Write a new post when a post is created. That would be a bad idea. But 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 you can do something. You can run some action when that certain event runs. Yes. Where do you get a list of all of the uh, hooks and what they do? I will show you uh, at least the URL, if not the page, a little later. So, but there is a good reference for that. Yeah. Anything else? Now we enter the uh, very dangerous part of the talk, which involves live coding, uh, which is always, um, especially with one hand, is always dangerous. Um, so many things can go wrong. Um, I'm going to note that today I'm using this thing called MAM, um, Mac Apache, MySQL, PHP. It's just this application that runs. It's all like neatly configured there. Um, um, so I'm going to be using that. There's something very similar on Windows called XAM, um, which I've used when I've had to work in Windows. Um, and uh, working on a survey directly um, is okay. You can do that. Um, but there are a couple of reasons why you probably don't want to. The first of which is you can, in the process of building a plugin, you can mess up your website. Um, hopefully not in a way that you can't fix by turning off the plugin, but you know, it's a trial and error kind of thing. So um, I would not recommend working on a live site. Um, but that's standard practice, right? Um, so in terms of writing a plugin today, let's let's do really simple plugin. So here's the task. Display a word count for posts. Right? Someone might want that in their blog, right? Um, so let's try that. So in terms of writing a plugin, um, so we're going to write this as a PHP script. As I mentioned before, and you all know, uh, WordPress is written in PHP, but in general, all of its plugins are written in PHP. Um, just a show of hands, um, how many of you are familiar with PHP, have programmed in PHP before? Okay. How many of you have not, or don't like PHP, or have another favorite language? Okay, all right, good, good. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit later about how to use, how to extend WordPress without how to hook into this system without using PHP, but um, but that's a separate thing. So in general, WordPress plugins are PHP. So we'll just do an example like that first. Um, so we're going to write a PHP script. We're going to put it in WP Content Plugins, um, and the first step is that it requires a certain header. So here's the dangerous part where I start live coding. Um, all right, so let's see how this works. Okay. Um, all right, here's my head. Okay, and um, here is my browser with my locally running server. All right. Let's 
Let's see if I can read what I was actually did. Um, all right, so let's get started. So um, the first thing, I just created this header um, ahead of time, so I'm just going to copy and paste it in. But uh, we can take a look at this. So basically, there's a there's a plugin name you have to declare. There's a description, a version, author, author URI. You can also enter things like the plugins URI, a few other different metadata things. But it's all actually in. This is a PHP comment, but it's just a specific kind of comment that WordPress itself will just parse through and use that information to display the plugin. So, um, so let's save this. Um, put it in the right place. Um, I'm going to call this word count. PHP, and this is in my WP content plugins folder. So this is the right place. I'm gonna save that. All right. So then let's go back to the blog, um, to my plugins section. Right. Um, so here, you know, the default blog plugins plus WordPress, which we'll talk about later. Reload it, and it already recognizes a new plugin, Display Word Count, and I can even activate it. Um, it's not doing anything right now, right? It looks like that. It's not going to do anything. Um, but that's what we want. Um, so um, that's fine. I'll deactivate it. Um, and now let's actually do the fun part. So, um, all right, so that's the header. Question. Yes? If you'd like to activate it, would it fail to compile changes as you make them, or would it just keep looking through a way to the book player? So um, the way it works is that basically every time you reload WordPress, all of these different resources, the functions that are plugins, things like that, are loaded each time that instance. Um, some servers have a weird caching thing, so I don't want to talk about everything. But, but in general, normal PHP, normal Apache, you're just going to, um, if you change something, then the next time you reload WordPress, It'll, you know, it, the change will be reflected then, or, um, or it'll give you an error at that point. Does that make sense? Or? Kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. So, yeah. I, so like, if you had started coding and then said, like, hey, print, you know, this line of text to the screen. Sure. Would you have to deactivate it, and reactivate it for that to actually happen on the or? No. So, so, okay, I see, I see what you mean. So, uh, once you activate it, all WordPress knows is that. This plugin at this path is activated. So every time it reloads WordPress, any page is reloaded or whatever, it's going to go find that again and load it. Okay. Yep. So when you say reload, can you, um, let's say, display a second post for you on another URL that didn't have WordPress? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That would constitute a reloading of WordPress. Yes. And it goes to everything in, in essence, basically starts on the cycle. Yes, it does. That starts to be very both well, database and um, yes, um, that's why you would want a plugin like WP Cache or WP Super Cache. Um, for the most, um, yeah, and there are, there are ways to get diagnostics on how many queries are run per refresh, um, things like that. But in general, um, you know, for any environment, I would highly recommend one of those good caching plugins. So, yeah, so when you're doing plugin development like this on, on an actual site, yes, a test site. Presumably, you would, you would turn the cache off. That's a good point. Yes, yes. You'll want to turn the cache off while you're developing. Um, otherwise, you know, if you make some change, then if it's something that is in your cache, in the WordPress cache, and you look at that page again, that change will be reflected there. So that's a very good point. Yes. So we look it's simply just like a refresh on your browser. Yes. Okay. You also, if you code anything like me, you don't want to develop on production anyway. Well, exactly. That, I mean, that, that's a whole other thing. You don't want to code on a live site. I mean, I, yeah, so. All right. So let's actually write the plugin, the meaty part. So the plan is first we have to write the filter function that will do the job. So it's going to take the content as its input, it's going to count the words, it's going to add that HTML to the end, and then it's going to return that modified content. Right? Standard filter takes something, modifies it, returns it. Um, all right, so let's do that first. Um, so here we are. I'm going to write function word count, except it's going to take an argument, um, content. All right. And this is tough when you can't read what you're doing. Um, and then um, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the count. So I'm going to make this a little bit verbose. Um, 
and I'm going to use this string word count function that PHP gives me. <coughs> that looks okay. All right, and then uh, and then I'm going to modify the content. Um, so I'm going to replace the content with the content plus. Um, <coughs> A paragraph that says in parentheses x words, except I want to replace x with count. Um, so I'm in double quotes. This is a PHP thing. I'm in double quotes, so I can just enter count here, and it's going to replace that for me. Then return content. I think that looks okay. All right. Um, so that's our function, right? Um, that by itself will not do anything, right? Um, that'll just create the function. There's nothing calling it. There's nothing that knows that you need to call this when you hit this certain code. So we need to register it. That's, that's the next step. So we have to, we have to register the function as a filter. Um, and we're going to use this hook, which I showed earlier, the filter hook, the content. All right, so let's do that. That's the same syntax I showed earlier. Um, it's add filter. The content word count looks okay. Okay. All right. Now let's see if this actually works. So, um, reload. All right. Now, okay. Um, let's take a look at the. So here's the blog itself. Closing Just pen. Reload it. What's that? Closing pen. The PHP is not closed. Oh, um, that's a PHP thing. Um, I did. It's. In general, good practice to not close your PHP. Um, and it has to do with, for example, if you close the PHP and if you have a space after it, it's hard to recognize that you get extra spaces and whatever. Um, things like it, 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 this will not hurt you. Was it closed on the slide? Well, this will be probably fine either way. Great. So, um, all right, so let's give this a try. So here's the blog as it stands now. I'm actually going to go to this post itself. Um, it's just you know the default. Um, now let's turn on the plugin. Everybody cross your fingers and reload. Ta-da! All right, so it says it's 17 words. All right, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, if I can get this blind, you can too. Um, so all right. Um, all right. So let's see what we're doing next. So that's the first part. So that's a filter book. Um, now let's let's add something else. Let's make this fun. So um, let's add a sponsorship message. Every plugin needs a sponsorship message, right? So um, so let's add something that will show up in the very bottom in the footer um, of the plugin. So here's the the uh, plan. Um, so we'll write an action function this time. Um, since there's no well, there is a footer in the theme, but but there's no you know footer content already that we're going to modify. Instead, we're just going to have an action which executes at the very bottom of the page and just prints it directly out onto the PHP. Um, so into the HTML, I'm sorry. Um, and so we're going to use this, uh, use an action function and register it against WP footer, which is this action. Um, and again, I'll show you the list of where all these hooks are documented. So, um, so let's do that real quick. Um, so I'm going to create another function called add count, and we don't need any uh, arguments for this function. And then I'm gonna. This is the HTML I want to add. It's here. So I'm gonna. It's an image. It says counting sponsored by the count. All right. Um, oh, that's not where I wanted to. All right. And then all I'm gonna do is print. That right. and so whenever um, add count is run, it's just going to print that directly to the HTML. Right now, same deal as always. Uh, there's nothing telling it to run add count, so we have to register the hook. So we're going to say add. Uh, this is a action. WP footer. Uh, add count. Huh. All right. Um, all right, so let's give that a try. So we're back here on our page. Um, nothing down in the footer except the stuff the theme gives us. Um, I'm going to reload. 
and we get the count, right? Yeah, and it's, uh, it's counting sponsored by the count. All right, looks good. All right, so, so that, that's great, right? That's exactly what we want. All right, now just to belabor this, just to, just to really knock this into your head, um, I'm gonna point out that this first one, the word count function we wrote, so this is a filter, so it takes an argument and it returns it, right? Um, as opposed to the second one, the add count, this is an action, so it takes nothing and it returns nothing. Um, yeah, it could return something, but it wouldn't matter. Um, so just to belabor that distinction. On the first one, though, how did you know that it would get the content? I know you had specified the dollar content, but how did you know? That's a good question. So. Um, the short, the well, so not the short answer, the correct answer uh, is that we wrote this against the filter hook called the content, and it's a property of that filter hook that every they always that, pass in the content. Exactly, it's always going to pass the content. Um, if you know, there's another filter hook called the title, and what it does is pass into these functions that are registered against it the title text, and then they can modify it, and it'll display the title. Um, and so filters will always take something. Some filter functions, some action functions actually, take arguments as well. Um, some filter functions take extra arguments, which tell the function more about the environment in which it's running. But the important one always for filters is that the first argument is the one that WordPress expects you to modify and return. But again, the documentation for all the hooks says what each hook is going to give you. So the content is a hook that's been defined by WordPress, not by the UA. Yes, so this, this hook, the content, um, is what is something WordPress decided. And some of the hooks, I mean, some are WP something, some are the something. I mean, it's all over the place, but WordPress decided. Yes? Can you talk a little bit about uh, filter action order? Like, let's say you wanted to put another image at the bottom. Sure, okay, so um, the, the short answer is it's explained in the codex, the website. Um, the, the, the actual answer is that when you, uh, when you add a filter or add an action, there's actually an optional third argument here, which is some ordering priority number. Um, and it'll basically you enter it something like 10 and you know, it'll register it as 10, and then it'll run everything in order from lowest to highest of all the thing functions registered against that hook. Um, there's a default value. I don't remember what it was. But um, for the most part, you won't run into a lot of situations where the rule ordering matters. But you could run into it when you uh, have some interaction with some other plugin. And then you have to actually look at that other plugin, see what number priority number they used, and then make yours lower or higher based on that. Um, yeah, you, you do get some ugly dependencies and stuff like that. Yeah. So, hopefully, I hope that you do not need to do that. So. All right, um, are we good so far? My live coding was sort of successful. So, all right, um, let's. All right, so that's an action. If you don't put a, if you don't put a priority, what does it default to? Uh, it defaults to a default value, which I do not remember. Medium. What's that? Medium. Yeah, but it's medium. I, I don't remember. Um, so. All right. Um, so that's um, okay. So second part of my live coding. There's a little bit more. Um, so right now. Counting happens on all pages. Let's just verify, make sure that happens. Um, so this is, you know, the actual individual. This is post number one, the individual one. I can go to the test blog, go to the main page, and it's also showing up here, right? And then also the count is showing up here, right? Maybe this isn't what we want, right? Maybe we only want the count and the count um, to show up in the individual pages, right? Suppose. Um, so let's see how we can do that. All right, so the way we want to do that is use a WordPress function, a function WordPress gives us called, in this case, is single. Um, and if you're at all familiar with uh, theme development, you may know that WordPress gives you a lot of different functions which tell you about the environment it's running in. This is one of those. 
In theme development, you probably won't use is single because there's a separate, you're not really defined a separate page for the single page layout, but, um, but that exists in themes as well. So um, let's add that in, see how simple that is. Um, so what we'll want to do for a technical reason, you want to put it inside the function, um, which I can answer later if someone really wants to know. Um, so all right, grab it, it is single, and close it, and I like my tabs, and then uh, let's wrap this one as well. Ah. <laughs> All right, so uh, there we go. So I just took the contentful parts of the functions that actually do something. Um, and wrap them in, you know, if is single. Um, and is single is going to say, based on the environment it's running in, whether you're on a single page or single page layout or not. Um, the one thing I want to point out um, is that here, in the filter, you want to put the conditional around everything that's modifying the content, but you don't want to wrap around the return content. Because if you do that, then it will, it'll return, by default, a blank string. Um, and all your content will be gone in non-single pages. So just, just one thing to worry about. But um, so that's what we got. And let's see if this actually does what we want. So here's, again, our main page. And we'll reload it. The count is gone. And we'll go to the actual page. And we got it. All right, so we used is single um, to distinguish between this page where is single says false this page where this page is single, just like me. So, um, so there we go. Um, all right. <laughs> all right, so that's an example of how you can use some conditional tags. You can also use template tags um, if you're in the right part of the site, in, for example, an action. But, uh, but you can use those types of WordPress functions within your plugin as well, in PHP. All right, um, just some resources that you should be aware of in doing some plugin development. Um, there's a PHP manual, uh, which is a pretty good resource, uh, php.net. Also, if you take any function name, make it php.net slash print something, um, then it'll give you direct, get you directly to that entry. Um, there's the codex, or codex, I don't know, um, which, is, uh, which is run by Automatic. It's actually a wiki, so you can edit it yourself um, and contribute as well. But there's a entry, again, these links are all on the Slack, which are online. But uh, but there's a good writing a plugin sort of tutorial-esque thing. And then there are a number of links off of there. In particular, there are links for a listing of all the fun filter hooks and all the action hooks. Um, so that's where you want to go for that. Um, there's the forum. The WordPress.org forum um, has a special room called 10 um, for plugin development. So you can get more information there on that. Um, and of course, the source, right? Um, go to the source um, when all else fails. So that's the um, track entry connected to the SVN for the WordPress core. Um, I personally prefer, one reason why I prefer to run my WordPress locally when I test is that because I have my WordPress code base there locally, I can also use in my case, grep, but you can use whatever recursive search tool and search through the entire code base locally, um, which is a little trickier to do if it's running on a server, say. So, you know, if I want to run, if I want to run, use a certain filter hook or action hook, and I'm curious when WordPress actually executes that filter, say, um, then I can search through the code for that filter name um, and it'll come up. So, so the source is always where you want to go. And the WordPress source is uh, generally um, relatively easy to read um, and it has decent comments. So uh, one thing, um, one of the codec, codex, I don't know, pages that has the uh, action book list also has a fabulous list, which I cut off artificially there, it goes longer, which tells you um, when different actions run in a typical request. So that's helpful to know too. Way down like in the 17 or something is, is WP footer, which we used at the very bottom of the page. So, um, some 
Th this is also on the uh, codex entry of filter hooks, uh, or action hooks, I'm sorry. Um, and it's towards the top of that wiki page. Gotcha. Yeah, so you can get it from the link to the writing and plugin entry. So. All right, um, things to look into, uh, things to keep in mind and think about as you write your plugin. Um, one is namespacing. Um, this is sort of a problem with WordPress in general and PHP in general, you could say. Um, there's a namespacing problem, so you can easily have collisions with different functions defined in the WordPress or, or in other plugins. Um, and so you can use things like this, uh, this function. It's a PHP function called function exists, and you give it a function name, and it tells you if that function exists or not. And then if it doesn't, then you can define your own, say. Um, you can use PHP classes, objects, um, and you can also, you know, you can also try to pick unique names. A good way to do that is to pick some moderately long prefix on like every function you use or every variable you use in your plugin, uh, which is a little pedantic, but uh, it works. So that's that. Especially if you're going to be distributing, sharing your plugin, <coughs> that's something you definitely want to do. Um, saving options. So a lot of uh, a lot of different plugins, you know, have an options page that they add, and then you can change some settings. Um, all this stuff. Um, so the actual changing settings, um, there are functions that WordPress gives you, like uh, get option, set option, things like that, um, and you can use those functions instead of writing directly into the database. WordPress will take care of that and does caching and stuff for you. So you want to use those. Um, there's also a way to add those admin menu option screens. Um, and so there's a nice WordPress uh, codex entry on that. Um, so you want to follow those directions. Other things to think about, security. Um, this, of course, particularly if you're going to distribute it. But even if it's your own internal site, um, you don't want to open up another security vulnerability. Um, I did say another. Um, <laughs> um, but um, WordPress does give you a lot of you know, 60% of security issues are data validation issues. You know, if someone gave you, you know, a specially crafted, you know, URL or specially crafted input for a form or something, then they could get into your database or something. That you can solve with data validation. And WordPress gives you a lot of different functions, which WordPress defines, um, to do data validation, like checking if an email is a valid form for an email, or checking, you know, if an SQL query it looks like an actual SQL query and escaping things that might uh, might mess up your system. Um, so th those are things that WordPress does have some functions which you should use. Um, so that's that. Um, and then finally, um, you should think about sharing your plugin. Um, so uh, there's a huge community, a huge repository of WordPress plugins um, on the plugins directory page I showed earlier. Um, I list few plugins there. Um, it's all for free, which could be good or bad. Um, you could be famous like me and talk at WordPress meetups, but you won't get paid, right? So, uh, so it's totally up to you. Um, the restriction on stuff on WordPress.org is that it has to be GPL compatible in terms of licensing, um, which is very I can get into GPL if anybody's curious. But, but anyway, um, it has to be GPL licensed, which is a certain license. Um, technically, there's talk that any plugin that you write for WordPress has to be GPL compatible, but that's sort of like a theoretical legal argument. If you're not going to share it, if you're not going to distribute it, then it doesn't really matter what the license is, right? If you're only running it on your server. So, um, so that's that. Uh, but please consider sharing with other WordPress users. If you create something wonderful, Probably other people want to use it too, or even something very, you know, very esoteric. Probably other people want to use it too. So um, always something to think about. All right, that that's the main chunk of that there, um, and then I'll dive into extending WordPress with other languages using webhooks. Any questions at this point before I move on? Yes. Um, about the namespacing problem. Uh, speaking as somebody who's Pretty much an expert programmer, but not an expert PHP programmer. Um, <coughs> are you saying that all the functions that are defined by all the plugins and all the functions that are defined by WordPress, they're all in one global namespace, and you have to be careful about that? Yes. Okay. 
By default, right? Um, so, yes, yes, that's correct. Um, there is the the way that um, your experience programmers often get around that is by creating a class, a PHP class, and creating an instance of that. Um, although there, even you know, the variable for you use for that that could be a namespace collision. But but if, if you were really concerned about it, you could put it all in an object that was like your name underscore the function. Yes, yes. Pick some bizarre name for your object and put it all in there. That's the safest way. Yes. I myself tend not to do that because I'm not a huge fan of object-oriented PHP. Um, but uh, but that's that. If you want to do that, more power to you. All right. I'm going to move on. Um, if you think something later, of course, you can bring it up or come talk to me later. Um, so we've been talking about extending WordPress. And both, P both WordPress and extending WordPress in plugins is in PHP by default. I mean, that's, that's just sort of the way it is. But what if you like another language better? Right? Or what if you want to integrate WordPress <coughs> with another system? Say your intranet system, your content management system, Twitter, whatever, right? Um, if you want to do some sort of integration like that, and your other system's not in PHP, say, or you know, things of that nature, how would you integrate WordPress with something else? So um, the solution that I propose um, is called Bookpress, um, with that fancy spinning <laughs> logo. Um, and here's a sort of uh, just general uh, schema for what is going on with Bookpress. Here's the idea. So here's WordPress with Bookpress. Um, and you know some action or filter occurs, right? So you want to do something. So then, at that point, Bookpress is going to send a request over HTTP to your script, which can be on that same server or on any other server. And then, I mean, if it's a filter, then the response will matter as well. And it'll take that response and use that as the filter's response. Um, and this is a post request. Um, so the variables you send it um, against that script can be as long as possible. But, but anyway, so it's a, that's the kind of HTTP request it is. That's basically the general idea. It's very simple. And this is a concept called webhooks. Um, so, think, well, so simple you'll think it's stupid. Um, it is very simple. Um, but it's the idea of using a post webhook and registering against some application a certain URL which then will process, you know, do things with that. And basically the, the sort of idea with webhooks, there are a few different things you can do with it, but the basic idea is that it's making the web programmable, basically, right? If there's, you know, this is your WordPress.org site, if you wanted to, you could write a PHTP plugin for it, you could do whatever you wanted to it. But in general, the idea of webhooks is if a web app gives you a place where you can enter a URL that it will ping every time something happens, and use that response, then basically you've built a plugin architecture. And even if you don't run the server for the web app itself, you're basically able to modify that behavior through that webhook. Um, so that's the idea with webhooks. It's a sort of a broad-based movement. Um, so, and there's a website, webhooks.org, which I encourage you to take a look at. But that's exactly what uh, Hookpress does. It adds post webhooks. It changes these hooks, the filter hooks, action hooks that we've been talking about in WordPress, and extends them and makes them post webhooks. Um, so it supports both actions, meaning that you can build push notifications off of this system. Um, and there are huge advantages to doing something like that, which I'll talk about later. Um, and you can also get filter webhooks. So basically, in essence, there, you can extend WordPress without PHP. Um, I would encourage you to do that on your own local server, but um, you don't want to you know, ping another server across the internet you know, every time you get a hit on your site. But um, if it's on your own site, um, then ideally it'll use sockets and it'll be fast and you know, there won't be much of a performance hit. So um, you can extend WordPress without PHP. That's kind of exciting for some people. So um, before you get WordPress, Bookpress. Let's let's show you Bookpress. All right. Um, so the first example I want to show you. We'll do both a filter and an action. Um, 
So the first example, this is just a short PHP script. Script, um, very short. All it does is it takes. We're going to be modifying the content again. So it takes this uh, input, this variable called content, this HTTP variable, uh, which is in the request super global, um, and it takes that value. It runs it to string rev, which is PHP for string reverse, um, and then it echoes it, and then it re responds to it. That's all it does. So let's take a look at what that actually means. Um, so here is, I don't know the example of it. Um, so localhost, all right. Oh, that's a horrible example. So, <laughs> um, ring, right? So. Then you get Gnir, right? That's all it responds. It doesn't give you any HTML or anything. That, that's what it gives you back. So that's fine. All right. So that's what we're going to set up as a web hook. So let's try this out. So first, we need to activate hook press. I'm going to turn off the display word count. Um, and then when, with hook press activated, there's a new settings page called web hooks. Just looks like it. Um, and so, then I'm going to add a new, I want to add a filter. And I want to add the content. All right. And, and here, depending on the filter, there might be multiple variables, multiple different, uh, different information that you can send to the webhook. Here, for the content, it's just the content. And you just got to return it modified. So, um, so we're, uh, we'll leave that alone, and then we'll enter That looks right. All right. Enter that URL. Add a new webhook. All right. So we got the new webhook. We can turn it off. We can turn it on. It's exciting. Um, all right. So that's that. Now let's try this. All right. So here's the page as we left it last time. And I will reload. Cross my fingers. Ta da. All right. So now it's in reverse, right? I mean, it vaguely says welcome to WordPress. So, um, just to recap, what happened is when I reloaded the page and when I hit the area where it's going to display the content, HookPress has told WordPress that before you display the content, I want to do something to it. And I'm going to send it to this other script on the local server in this case. But it could be a foreign server, right? Um, and then takes the response, which was the reverse string, give it back to WordPress, and that's what got displayed. Um, so this is, you know, the stupidest example ever. You could do more fun things with this very easily. And of course, that script doesn't even need to be in PHP. Right now, I just wrote it in PHP because I just wanted a quick example. But, for example, what if you wanted to interface with Twitter, right? Every time you publish a post, you want something to go up on Twitter. What if you wanted to do that? Um, there are independent plugins to do something like that that do a very good job. But say you just want that bare bones functionality, this would be a great way to do that. So, so here's an example. Um, right now, I'm just going to use a site called Scriptlets. Um, this is a site that came out of the webhooks community, um, a webhooks evangelist called um, Jeff. What's your last name? Um, Jeff. <laughs> created this, he's going to kill me. Um, but uh, it's a fabulous... Jeff Lindsay? Jeff Lindsay, yeah. yeah. Good guy. Um, he created this site called Scriptlets. Um, highly recommend it. Um, and basically, you can add some code in here. It, you, you can get variables sent to it using request.get or whatever, um, which is basically the Google App Engine syntax. Um, you can write server-side scripts in PHP Python or JavaScript, which is kind of exciting for me. Because um, I like JavaScript. But um, I have a Python script now, which I'm going to throw at it. Um, I don't want to fetch anything. All right. Um, and I have this code here. It's a little long, but not long if you actually read Python. Um, I'm going to copy this over. Paste it in. All right, so let's see what it actually does. Real quick, just to give you an idea. It sets the username, password, you know, it takes the post title variable and the post URL variable lobs it together with the space in between. That's the status we're going to update Twitter with. And it uses some libraries, encodes it how Twitter wants it, sends it, sends it to this URL. That's all it does. And then it does print out like a failure or success. But this is going to be an action, so we're actually going to ignore that. 
Yes. Yeah. So how does what how does hook press deal with failure on filters when it's expecting a return? It's a good question. So right now um, it doesn't do anything. Um, meaning that it returns an empty string, or meaning that it well, so it depends on whether it's a filter or an action, right? So if it's an action. It doesn't even care about the response anyway, so it doesn't matter. If it's a filter, um, it's still going to take that response and print it. I can't remember whether I implemented the feature where it has to be a success, uh, 200 or not. I should. That will be in there soon if it's not there now. But uh, in general, yes. Um, there's no, there, there isn't anything sophisticated like if there's a failure, try again. Um, yeah, there isn't anything like that. So write good scripts. So, um, so all right, so let, let's run this. So the way scriptlets works is you enter your code, and then you save the scriptlet. You save it. That's looking good. All right, and then it gives you a URL where you can run it. Um, it's pretty fabulous. And so let's register a webhook against this. So uh, we're going to choose an action. And we want this to go off when we publish a post, right? So there's an action called publish post. Um, and then I'm going to enter the URL. And then we want to choose what variables we want to give that script. So, the, and these are going to be sent over post. So we could even send it the content. There's no restriction on length. But um, the things it's expecting are post title and post URL. So let's pick those. At register the new webhook. All right, so that's turned on. So now we have to uh, start a new post and see what happens. So let's uh, add a new post. All right, this is awesome. All right, so let's publish this. Oh, well, first, <laughs> just so I'm not lying, uh, let's check the WordPress test account. Oh, good. Alright. Um, so now let's publish this. Cross your fingers. Alright, um, so it's published. The post looks like that. Oh, and it's backwards, but you know, that's fine. Um, and let's reload the Twitter page. Alright, okay, so and that's the URL. Um, it even you know converted it to bit.ly. Twitter did that. Um, and it sends me to this. Of course, that bit.ly is a local host, so nobody else can do anything with that. But, you know, it worked, right? And if you actually have a domain, it'll work fabulously. It'll send it to Twitter um, with not much of a performance hit either. So um, so that's that's that. So that's uh, Hookpress. You can use with webhooks um, for filters and actions. Um, I'm just going to show you a few more. Um, I'll click through this. Um, show you a few resources related to that as well. Um, oh, of course, you should get Postgres. That's the first step. Um, it's on my website. There's a screencast of essentially exactly what I did right now, um, right there. So that's nice to take a look um, at that. Um, and of course, um, not of course, I'm on Twitter as Postgres as well, where I put up updates of new versions and stuff like that. So you can follow Postgres on Twitter. Um, resources for developing with webhooks. Um, one that's really nice, I should show this to you, is postbin.org, also made by Jeff Lindsay. Um, should I have this some place? No. So postbin.org, um, incredibly simple. You make a new postbin, it gives you this random code, that's the URL. <coughs> And then let's you know let's try this. Um, let's register a new webhook with publish page, publish post, um, and we can give it whatever we want to. Doesn't matter. Um, and give it that URL, um, and then publish a post. All right, um, so let's see what happened in the post bin. Um, now I reload the post bin, and nothing happens. Huh. It didn't it It's the way for the cost. 
trying to reverse an empty string. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now it published. So it hit that. Basically, it just sent those variables. It sent a post request to this post bin. Anything that is requested of this URL, um, a post request, it'll keep all those variables stored. I don't know how long. But then if you go to that URL, it will show you what was sent to it um, and when. So this is a great debugging tool. Um, so when writing a web hook or something and you want to make sure you want to know what it's sending, um, just create a web hook with some random post bin and then see what it's actually throwing up there. So this is a great tool. Yes, Al? Uh, what about incoming WordPress things? Could I say have two WordPress sites, then send a web to a second site which received the same post? Um, so in terms of incoming things, uh, Hookpress doesn't help you with that at all. Um, one reason is that, uh, is that WordPress already has sort of an API for that. It's the XML RPC API, um, which different services use to you know, publish posts with, you know, like desktop clients and stuff like that. And it's all out there. There's a way to do that and authenticate. So ideally, um, just to not reinvent the wheel, it's not nearly as nice of a you know, syntax is just throwing up post variables, but you know, it's it's more secure. For example, so um, so in terms of incoming things to a WordPress blog, that's what I would recommend. Uh, it's the XML RPC. Yeah, remote procedure call that RPC. So yes. No, not that I'm aware of at all. Actually, there this is relatively recent. There haven't been a huge number of downloads of WordPress yet either. So. Um, yeah, um, let me run through this list and then I'll mention. I'll talk about performance, which you may wonder. About. Um, so, uh, in terms of running basic scripts, I recommend scriptlets and then general webhooks information, webhooks that work. Um, I'm going to mention uh, performance real quick with webhooks. Um, so, yes, there is, particularly with the filters where it's done synchronously, it has to w make that request, it has to wait for the response and then keep going in WordPress. Um, so yes, there's a time lag. Um, what you'll notice, however, is that if you, you if it's something where you want the same thing to happen every time, like a, like a filter that reverses the string, say, right? Um, if it's something as simple as that, that is not very dynamic, then a webhook like that will work fine with a caching plugin. So again, I'll recommend the caching plugin, and for whatever the cache window is, you know, eight hours or a day or whatever, Every time someone hits that page, it's only ever going to hit that webhook once, just the first time, and it'll catch it. Um, so that's what I would recommend. That's what I would recommend for any WordPress install. But um, that's what I would say in terms of performance. Yes. So for add action, the add action request, request, you actually created that asynchronous request. Is that what you're saying? Because we filtered your signature response back. So right now, yes. Good question. Right now. Um, I believe they're both done synchronously. Um, so the actions should be changed to a format that's asynchronous. Um, that's just the programming issue I haven't quite figured out how to do yet within WordPress. So, yeah, but ideally it will move to an asynchronous one for the actions. Yes? Um, suppose you were writing uh, or you're, you're integrating a filter that you were already written in, say, Java or something for your favorite. Uh, markup language that's not supported by WordPress. Um, you were mentioning earlier in the talk uh, some context contextual information like uh, is single and stuff like that. Can the the, uh, the web service that's being called can access any of that information, or would you have to write a PHP plugin to wrap it and pass it in the appropriate context? The the short answer is no. You can't do that. Um, so yes, you could write. A separate plugin, a lot like Word, a lot like WordPress or something, to add that extra information and send it along, um, or even write a PHP wrapper which just executes the Perl or Java or whatever locally. Um, those would be the straightforward answers. There is one, um, but I invite you to check out WordPress first for the hooks you're interested in, because um, if you take a look at the, uh, for example, the um, add new webhook um, item. Here. 
you'll notice that there are, for a number of different actions and stuff, there are a lot of different variables you can actually send. And that's because it's not just the one or two variables that were given directly to that action hook. There's actually, for certain uh, kinds of fields and status things and stuff like that, there are certain variables that HookPress will take care of that for you. HookPress will check what the environment is like and then pass some of these, if you choose to use it, um, some of those variables along as well. So I invite you to take a look at it and see what variables are there now and we'll see what hooks are there now um, first before writing a custom wrapper. But ultimately you would probably have to do something like that. Yeah. All right, I think, yes, that is it. So please uh, take a moment to rate this talk on speaker degree. I would very much appreciate that. Um, otherwise, if we have time, um, I can take some more questions.